Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and BMG Drive. Uh, so if you guys don't know, I had a poll on my community tab in YouTube for the past week or so, or week or so, yeah. Um, whether or not to either build an electric hypercar or supercar or whatever you want to call it, or a 1920s race car. And at first the poll was pretty close, but shortly after, 1920s race car just completely pulled ahead. So that's what we're doing today. And honestly, I was actually really hoping for this one. I just assumed people would vote for the electric supercar or whatever before that, but this is great. I'm so thrilled to do this. The Bugatti Type 35 is a race car of the time that people were throwing around, and the Type 35 has a quite small engine. I want to have a, a Type 35, but just crazier. Wild. I want 100% wheel spin through all four gears that this thing's going to have, and we're going to achieve that today. Um, it's also going to have absolutely terrible braking, terrible tires. It's going to have no grip at all. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to go for... Um, like steel or aluminum, to be honest, we can go for aluminum ladder frame, because that's more realistic, I think, for, like, this, this kind of vehicle. Um, now we can go double wishbone, front and rear, we could do that. I don't know if that's realistic, I will go back and take a look later, we'll leave it like that for now, because that's, like, the sportiest kind of suspension. Um, this car is going to be basically a 1920s, of course, with 1946 tech, because that's the earliest you can go. It's going to be a supercar, basically, from that time, it's going to be a race car, all a race car. Um, I want to do a straight six engine. Max out the stroke, we're gonna have a quite large, we'll do a, now, I, I have tested with an 8.1 liter engine, um, I think we'll go down to a little more realistic 7 liter engine, which is still way massive than the Bugatti's type, the Bugatti Type 35, so I think a 1.4 liter was the biggest, we've got 265 horsepower, which is a fair bit, this is only a 7 liter, my 8.1 got obviously more, uh, almost 400 pound feet of torque, which is honestly pretty dope, uh, we can go for a bit smaller of an exhaust, we go for more ignition timing, like 300 horsepower is like my, my ideal horsepower probably. Um, yeah, we're making it, okay, three, I didn't even test this engine size, okay, the crank is not liking this at all. But uh, it's still functioning, that's all that matters, that's that's literally, that's perfectly fine. Um, two and a half inch exhaust, no mufflers, 460 pound feet of torque, which is <laughs> a monstrous amount of torque. Uh, and we're gonna use this roadster body, like I said, we gotta go to it and click it. And it's right there, it's a, it's a coupe. It's a roadster, okay, 1930, it's a 1930 body, this is, a, this is a, a futuristic kind of vehicle, I guess. It takes a good second to load this body, and to be honest, it is, it, it's a it's a detailed body, it looks very, very nice, and like, big thank you to the modder who um, made this whenever they made it, I'm not too sure. It's been on the uh, Steam workshop for a bit. Rear wheel drive, because what else would you, you know, do you want, really? 190 kilometers an hour, top speed, which is actually pretty low. Open diff, semi slicks. Now we have standard 90 millimeter wide tires. That's not gonna fly on. That's fly for me at all. Yeah, not not that one. That doesn't actually. Okay, we'll keep it stock. We'll increase the tire diameter, and we'll go for like what 165 is a bit. I think yeah, 185 is fine, which is actually pretty. That's actually pretty thick. We'll go a bit smaller actually. 165 is what we'll limit ourselves to. That seems like a reasonably. Terrible amount of tire size. Like, that's, that's pretty thick, honestly. That's pretty thick. She's looking pretty thick. Okay. Um, max rim offset as well, because we need that stability. 165. <laughs> slash 95, 23. 23 inch wheels. 95 sidewall. It's got a massive sidewall. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> they're rated for a great amount of speed, too. This is just fantastic. We do, they're only cross ply, so what do you expect, really? Max brakes. Um, probably max pad type, or almost max pad type. And we're going to increase the quality of the brakes by quite a bit, because it's going to be, like, the bane of our existence. No under tray needed for us. And we'll go for a two-seater. Basic, no safety. This is this is the 1920s, after all. And we weigh just under 3,000 pounds, which is very heavy for a race car of this era. But also, no race car... Not, not many race cars had 300 horsepower. Like, that's a lot That's a lot of power for today. That's, that's, that's like, Toyota Camry horsepower, which is pretty nuts. We've... We've got 100%, <clears throat> near 100% wheel spin through first, second, third, and fourth. Which is obviously what we, we want more wheel spin, if anything. 060 under 11 seconds, which seems actually quite reasonable. There's the, yeah, there's wheel spin. But we do have understeer, which is a, is a positive side. We'll increase plus 5 on that. We'll go plus 5 on the aerodynamics as well, because I want to get a higher top speed. 192. Okay, that's it's not going up much. Okay, so we cost only 80000 in $2012, which is incredibly cheap. We can do <laughs> 0. 0.7 Gs. That's just fantastic. Wow. Um, a terrible drag coefficient of 1. 1.01. 1. And 100, only 190 feet braking distance. We're braking. Oh, wow. Not well. We we go like full, even on full race pads. 
Uh, ooh, that is so sketchy. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. Oh no, it's not gonna stop. This car is gonna be a death trap. Like, we can go for 4x4. Four four. Is that faster? It's it's the same 060. I'll tell you that right now, it's gonna be faster. But we'll leave it on two-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive because that's more fun. Um, we weigh 2,800 pounds now. We're, we're actually... You know, no, we're aluminum. Oh geez, we're already aluminum. You know what? I might change it off a double wishbone. Like, this car is, is leading into the future for sure. It's got a dual overhead cam engine. It's got double wishbone suspension, all front and rear. You can do this. There we go. Look at that. It's a roadster now. Now, the engine is sticking out the front, which kind of sucks, honestly. I don't like that at all. How do we change that? I might change that around. I might just make it a bit smaller. 6.6 .6 liters. Still a behemoth of an engine. Uh, That's totally reasonable, probably. That's pr oh, it's still there. Okay, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll, I'll make it smaller or whatnot. Uh, I'll design the car. It's going to be a pretty simplistic car. This is a race car after all. There's nothing to it. Uh, we're going to hop into Beam and G. I want to set some hot laps in this thing. I want to do some hot laps. Um, you guys can watch at the end. You can just skip to the end if you guys want to see that. We are going to design the car, though, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then, of course, I'll go over it quickly, and we'll hop into Beam and G. So sit back, relax, guys, uh, and I hope you enjoy. All right, guys, so we're designing our 1920s-ish kind of race car here. So I did a bit of engine tuning. Uh, I, I shrunk it just a little bit. Also increased the red line a bit as well. So it revs a bit higher, but it's got a bit more horsepower, about 330, but a bit less torque. It's a bit smaller, but a bit more rev-happy of an engine. Uh, starting with the front here, I decided to do just a big old grill in the front like any car of this era. Um, a sort of H-shaped grill, uh, and we'll, we'll learn more about why I did that later on. I think it looks pretty cool to start off. Um, put a bit of vents on the top of the hood. This car is a fairly simple car compared to a lot of my other builds. Um, these cars weren't that complex back in the day, and it doesn't need to be complex. So I do start working on a bit of a vent sort of on the side here where the exhaust might go, but I couldn't get the exhaust to work quite right, and it really frustrated me. So I kind of gave up on having the exhaust getting dumped out the or under the driver's side door, or yeah, I guess the driver's side door. This is what this this is a left-hand drive car. Um, Instead, I put it up just slightly in front of the driver's side door with the exhaust having a sort of mesh vent on either side of the car uh, with sort of triple exhaust instead of a six uh, exit exhaust, which would be really cool to be honest. It'd be like a real race car, but a triple exit exhaust is more than enough for me. Um, I do fiddle around, around with a few things like adding some rivets around the whole thing, making the whole body riveted together uh, and such. Now I'm just adding a few more details to the H grill. But yeah, I decided to not have the riveted pattern, um, you know, similar to the Bugatti. Because this is more of a uh, more of a road car first, I think, and also a race car. It's not just a straight, pure race car. Adding a spare tire, uh, changing the wheels are, is what I'm doing now. Just doing a few details here and there. Just seeing what we can do to add a bit more detail to the back. So we have a spare tire in the back with just two tail lights, uh, a small chrome bumper, and then adding just a, a, a few things here. So I do work on adding, uh, as you can see here, I, I'm trying to add a, a bunch of rivets just to sort of place them down. But I decided against it. It does look a little bit tacky almost. This is, you know, kind of like a luxury car. It's a sports car with a massive engine, obviously. It's about 6 liters in displacement. Quite large. Uh, and just finishing off the vehicle with a, a badge. We have um, the vehicle's name in front of us now. It's the Harriet GT. Harriet is, I guess, the model name as well as the brand name at this point. I'm not too sure. Um, but the name's Harriet. There's a big H badge, or a H, um, not badge, an H um, grill in the front there. Uh, in the shape of an H, which is, I guess, reminiscent of the cars of the past. I don't know. Is it? Who knows? Um, adding just a quick single individual reverse light, and in front of us is the 1920-ish Harriet GT race car. Alright guys, so the vehicle is done in front of us. The Harry GT is the name, and racing is the game. Uh, big old tires, though, yeah, they're, they're quite large. A bit larger than the Bugatti is what I could find here. Um, starting with the front design, real quick, we've got just, just very, very simple two headlights. Uh, an H-style grill, that is the Harry way we got to have an H-pattern grill and everything. Uh, a simple just foot ornament there. Pretty simple vents on the top there. Just It's a pretty simple car. This is the 1920s, 30s, or whatnot, even though this is like a 19... 30s body. That's fine. This is still the 1920s-ish race car. Um, a bit of extra stuff here and there. We have a Harriet badge on the side. We have a an heat extractor, I guess, right there behind the engine. We also have an heat extractor slash the exhaust pipes for the vehicle too. There, so the three exhaust pipes, which is pretty cool. Uh, right in front of the driver, like any good old 1930s car should have. Massive wheels. So we have a full-size spare in back with a simple bumper, and then we have some tail lights 
in reverse letters. Well, overall, the car is, is quite basic, but um, I was either going to make it a more of a street-going version like this is, or I was going to make it like a full-on race version, um, which is tons and tons of events. Uh, that would have taken a long time. Um, I was going to do like a bunch of rivets, but I decided against it because it just it just won't look clean. It's going to add more weight and beam energy. This car is fairly heavy at uh, 2,700 pounds. It's not bad. Top speed of 194 kilometers an hour. Here's 60 in about 10 or so seconds. We got point, we got 0.73 Gs of um of uh cornering Gs actually, which is not terrible, not awful. Just over a hundred thousand dollar cost as well. The car overall, yeah, it does have 5.4 reliability, which is which is pretty great. Which is pretty great. Not gonna lie, uh, zero comfort, zero drivability, eight safety, 7.9 sportiness, which is fantastic. We can we actually lower the safety quality down. We can save some money there probably. <gasps> We're saving weight, zero safety. We don't even need that. That's perfect. We just got two MPG. Wow, that's gonna be faster now. Nine and a half, nine point nine seconds, zero to sixty. Pretty fantastic, if you ask me. To be honest, um, first year still takes us to one hundred and three. Not bad. I want to stay about one hundred, one hundred kilometers an hour in second gear. Uh, yeah, the engine is very stressed to say the least. Okay, it's not, it's not saying we have issues, but we, we definitely have issues. Um, there we go. Okay, so 83% stress on the pistons and con rods, 22% from the revs, and just the torque is just, yeah. Um, the engine does still run, thank goodness. So we're gonna hop into Beam and G, and I wanna see, it's got so much wheel spin. It's got 100% wheel spin in, in pretty much every gear. We're gonna see if this thing is actually drivable in Beam and G. Uh, sit back, relax, guys. Uh, I'll see you guys there in, I guess, just one second. All right, guys, we're in Beam and G Drive. This is the uh, Harriet GT. It looks quite good in Beam. The headlights, everything all functions all hunky-dory, actually. Um, the car looks great, though. The blue looks fantastic. We got the triple exhaust on the side. They're going straight out. Uh, this is an Italian map. Uh, it's a pretty long track. This is the time trial mix circuit. It's not that long. I've never actually finished a lap ever of uh, the mix circuit. It's pretty long, but it's apparently, um, you know, 50-50 asphalt and gravel. It's 4.4 kilometers, apparently, but it's... it's it's, it's interesting to say the least. We're going to launch it in, in third person for a second here. You just see the absolute wheel spin. We can go to first, second. We can go to third, we have wheel spin. But all the wheel spin. I'll go back to first person. We're braking here a little early because we got to turn right here. I've done about two thirds, I want to say, this track before. I've never finished it ever. It should be interesting to say the least. We're going to try to go uh, at a fairly brisk pace. I mean, already 50, 60 kilometers an hour on straight up gravel is, is really interesting in a car with semi slick tires. Definitely not the tire of choice, I would say, for uh, this kind of race. Oh, there's a wall. We're fine. That's very close. You might hear the steering wheel flying around. Um, a lot of twists and turns are happening, and uh, I gotta move the steering wheel pretty quick to try to compensate for the severe oversteer this car has. We're breaking here. We gotta turn. If I had to go to first, it's it's quite quick though, honestly. We'll hop into third nice and quickly because uh, wheel spin issues, pretty much. Nice and casual. Get some wheel speed up here. 150 kilometers an hour is very quick for this car. A little faster, we're gonna brake a little, like right there. We're going back to gravel, down to second it is. Definitely gotta be careful when you're transitioning to different surfaces. Use the handbrake just a little bit down to first. This is pure dirt right here. We're going right off road. Next to us is a beautiful, lovely uh, open fields. Nice cobblestone kind of walls next to us. They're quite interesting. It's a beautiful scenery, even though we're on like the lowest possible graphic settings. It's still a beautiful game. Ooh, that was very close. We're gonna keep going here. We can probably get to 100 kilometers an hour safely on this little straightaway. 110. Oh, that's as, well as, that's, that's as far as I'm going, I think. We'll say 110. Oh, we're, we're overshooting this by quite a bit. That's okay. The car's still fine. Oh, there's, there's rocks. We're fine. Everything's great. <laughs> Everything's... This is... this is. Uh, it wouldn't be a, a race. A 1920s race if there wasn't lots of accidents, probably, I'm guessing. Um, so one accident's okay. We'll allow that. The car drives fine. Probably. It's a tough car. You know, it's the kind of vehicle you, you'll repair on the side of the road in a race. Um... Let's do this. Keep going. We're fine. The car is perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever, I would say. It drives fine, actually. Surprisingly. Okay, at 90, we're gonna break right here. Kind of first. Oh, wow. This thing just slides and slides on that gravel. Nope. 
Draw a loser out of there. The third, nice and quickly. The brakes are a nice, cool 200 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm, I'll, I'll say that. Not the hottest brakes in the world, but they are pretty, they are massive brakes, though. We're gonna brake early, use the handbrake a little bit. And we have a nice cityscape. It looks a little bit weird, but uh, we are in the lowest graphics settings coming up right away. This is a really cool course, actually. I like it a lot. Get a bit of speed in here. This turn will be coming up, I think, right here. Yep. Almost lost it. We're fine. We'll stay in third. Breaking early because we're turning up ahead, I think. Yep. Oh, that was close. That was a very close judgment. That was like a full breaking force, and like we almost didn't stop, which is nuts. Here's the finish line. We'll get some feet through here, I guess. Oh, there's a fence. Oh boy, we're fine. <laughs> How do we get back on the track? We gotta turn around here. This is see, this is this is what racing is all about. You know, having fun, making memories, of course. Memories off the road. We totally missed that last corner, but uh, you know that doesn't affect our race time. Probably, I'm guessing. I don't know how races actually work. We're fine. You know, that's what I get for not reading the signs. That was perfect. Full power through here. Like a 4.20 is, 4.19.5 is not bad, um, that seems like a totally appropriate time for this course, it's not that actually, it seems pretty bad. Uh, we're gonna hop into one last race though, uh, not using the Harry GT, actually maybe we should try a different vehicle in this and just compare and contrast. Like the Harry GT is pretty quick, but what if we hop in like another pretty old vehicle, that's not that old though, no, no, let's hop into a different map I think. A little, it's scary to say the least. Seconds. Now. There we go. Power. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. I think an appropriate time is about two minutes for like two laps, maybe. Two and a half minutes, maybe. A little slower there. I don't want to crash. We'll keep in second because I don't want to. If we can get 5 seconds ahead, maybe, or 15 seconds would be great, we could be under 2 minutes, would be fantastic, but that's not gonna happen. Nope. Nope. Are we fine? Are we fine? Are we, is everything good? Let's see. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Holy crap! Oh my gosh! I don't think this is working out that well. <laughs> How is the axle still all tanged? Um, the car drives great as you could tell. Uh, not too much beam and G. We're just doing a little bit of a drive here. I just want to see what we can do for a burnout, actually. We'll finish it off here. If you guys like this, leave a like down below. I'm going to do an electric hypercar coming up soon. Stay tuned for that. More other stuff that's coming. Other games are coming as well. I always say that, but more coming. We're going to have some more Street Legal Racing Redline, probably. Uh, another dirt video. A little more... A little more fun, I think, than, than the previous one. Uh, some more Gear City is still coming, too, so just stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I guess, as always, um, I'll see you next time.